Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky held talks Dutch Freedom Party leader and right-wing populist Geert Wilders on Saturday on the sidelines of the Ambrosetti Forum in Italy. Before they sat down for the talks, Zelensky thanked Wilders and the Dutch people for their warm support of Ukraine and its refugees during the course of its war with Russia. In response, Wilders stressed to Zelensky the importance of continued media coverage of Kiev's fight against the ongoing Russian invasion. The Ambrosetti Economic Forum is being held in Cernabio, Lake Como. Many times, and what you said yesterday, I just told your staff that and people should see what is happening you know, almost daily because it's mostly out of the news in, in, in the uh, West, and that's that's that people get used to it, and that's not how it should be. President, so good, good to see you. you. Great to see you, sir. Thank you so, thank much. You so much. How are you? I'm fine. I'm, yes. Yeah, thanks so much. And I know that our people, um, yes, our refugees from the very beginning of, of the war, they had a very warm um, hosting from your people. So we are thankful for, for everything. We have very good relations with your country. Yes. I was from Ukraine, but I was still Ukrainian. To Odessa, to the... um, well, First, let me say that we are um, of support uh, for Ukraine and for your fight. Once again, I saw your country many times. And what you said yesterday, I just told your staff that uh, people should see what is happening uh, almost daily because it's mostly out of the news in, in, in the uh, West. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's people get used to it and that's not how it should be. Russia had been planning to launch a new front in Ukraine from the Kursk Oblast. Before Kyiv's incursion into the region, Ukraine's commander-in-chief, General Oleksandr Syrsky, told CNN. In August 2024, Ukrainian forces stormed into Kursk Oblast, which signaled that despite Russia's advantage in personnel and equipment, its military has vulnerabilities. It reduced the threat of an enemy offensive. We prevented them from acting. We moved the fighting to the enemy's territory so that the enemy could feel what we feel every day, Sirsky said. The key objectives behind the Kursk operation were to prevent Russia from using the region as a launch pad for a new offensive, divert Moscow's forces from another part of the front line, create a security zone and stop Russian shelling of border settlements. His claims came amid a Russian offensive on the Pokrovsk front, considered to be the hottest spot of the war. Sirsky told CNN that despite the assaults, Ukrainian troops have now managed to stall the Russian advances there. Over the last six days, the enemy hasn't advanced a single meter in the Pokrovsk direction. In other words, our strategy is working, he explained. In addition, Sirsky said that the amount of artillery shelling and their intensity have decreased lately. However, Ukraine still faces challenges during the battles as Russia has significantly more weapons compared to Kyiv troops. The enemy does have an advantage in aviation, in missiles, in artillery, in the amount of ammunition they use, of course, in personnel, tanks, infantry fighting vehicles, Sirsky added. Due to the halt of military equipment, Ukrainian soldiers are heading to the battlefield after receiving less training than he'd like them to. As a result, some operations are failing. The operation of the Ukrainian armed forces in Kursk proves to the world that Russia can lose the war against Ukraine, stated Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. According to the president, he listened to a report from the commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Ukraine, Oleksandr Sirsky. They discussed the Pokrovsk direction and the Ukrainian military operation in the Kursk region. We are holding our defined positions and with each day of the Kursk operation, we prove to the world that Russia can lose this war. The only thing needed for this is our determination and the determination of everyone in the world who influences global affairs. It is not for Moscow to determine the future of our people. And this is how it must always be, Zelensky emphasized. Since the beginning of August, Ukrainian forces have been conducting an offensive operation in the Kursk region. So far, Ukraine has taken control of over 100 settlements in the region. Ukraine is using Polish-made PT-91 Tordy tanks, which were transferred in early 2023 during an operation in the Kursk region of the Russian Federation. As Defense Express writes, the Polish side did not regulate the use of such tanks in battles against Russians directly on Russian territory. The Polish authorities in this story are guided by the following principle. After the physical transfer of this or that weapon to the disposal of the Ukrainian military, it is no longer Polish property, so Ukraine has the right to dispose of it as it sees fit. 
Polish diplomats stated this principle during a conversation with journalists from the Romanian specialized publication Defense Romania. Obviously, the voicing of this principle, which concerns Ukraine's actions on the battlefield, also has a certain significance for bilateral relations between Poland and Romania. At the same time, for example, the estimated number of PT-91 Twardy tanks that the Ukrainian armed forces can currently use in the Kursk region is not disclosed. This is more of a political incident than a factor that could have a large-scale impact on the course of events in the battlefield. It is also difficult to establish whether the PT-91 Twardy was used immediately from the first days of fighting in the Kursk region or whether these tanks were introduced into action in this direction somewhat later. Romanian journalists are using data indicating that Ukraine could have received several dozen PT-91 Tordy tanks from Poland as well as 250T-72M1 tanks. Polish PT-91 Tordy tanks were first delivered to Ukraine in July last year. The deliveries were confirmed by the head of the presidential office, Andrzej Yermak. The number of vehicles transferred was not reported at the time. In January 2023, Polish authorities announced that they would supply Ukraine with another 60 tanks of this model, taking into account previous deliveries of Polish T-72 non-modernized versions Poland turned out to be the largest supplier of tanks for the Ukrainian armed forces.